ओके आर्थ्रोस्कोपिक नॉट आई सो यू हैव टू लिम्स ऑफ थ्रेड्स यू हैव डिसाइड वन एज अ पोस्ट एंड द अदर वन एज अ नॉन पोस्ट द पोस्ट हैज टू बी शॉर्टर पास द नॉट पुशर इन टू द द पोस्ट एंड मार्क इट विथ a mosquito poses this step is very important mark it because you can get confused between the post and the non post and if you forget which one is the post it could have a problem of sliding later so now that is what we have so there we let this hang down and there are two types of knots the locking and non locking so first i'll demonstrate the non locking knot which is the hangman's noose or the duncan loop keep a thread uh, keep a finger under the thread and pass the thread over the hand three knots three rounds over the two limbs of the loop that's what we have and then the pass the thread through the loop just near your finger there and now leave the finger and tighten this hold it tight and use a knot pusher to push the knot into the area you want to tighten there and now this is tight what i do is shorten the post now these are now of almost equal length shorten this and use a knot pusher to tighten this or you can pass point like that to pull and tighten the knot there now to put three half hitches to tighten this again i use one to the right use a knot pusher to push it to the position you want there it goes one to the left that is to make a reef type reef knot type of configuration there so that they won't get loose and later and one to the right again the three half hitches in opposite directions there we have the knot which will not get loosened now you can take the knot pusher and push it away even if you pull you know that the knot is very tight you decide the post this one is a post and this is a non post you pass the post through the eye of the knot pusher and lock it with a mosquito there in similar fashion like before pass the non post over your finger and this time instead of going around you go in between the threads once again between the threads the second time and between the threads the third time and now you come out passing in the loop just beyond your finger you tighten this and we use the knot pusher to push the knot towards the area you want to be tightened that you have tightened you use the mosquito to advance over the post should shorten it again and the knot pusher can be used to tighten the knot that pass point there now we can use the half hitches one on the right there's a knot pusher to tighten it one on the left tighten that and one to the right again is basically the half hitches which hold the knot in position even if the knot is a non locking or locking knot doesn't make a make a difference you can check the strength of the knot with your probe remove that and the knots can be cut off with a knot cutter not just for arthroscopic knot tying these are the instruments that is a knot pusher see that the 
tip has a hole through which the suture passes and you have a loop which is used to push the uh, suture into its position. That's a suture retriever, or we call it ice storm, the pet name, which is used to pull the suture out of the, uh, the joint through the portal. And these are the suture passing devices. So there are direct suture passing devices and indirect suture passing devices. So that is a direct suture passing device. This can be called a bird beak. It can be straight or curved to the left or curved to the right. This is a straight bird beak which we used to pass the suture from a uh, tissue. So this is a Again, a direct switch pass device. This is called a true pass, which has a mouth which opens and is used to hold the tissues. And when you push this needle, the needle comes out through there and retrieves the suture from the tip. I'll demonstrate it in a while. That's again a direct switch pass device. This has a self-retrieving -ret hook at the at the end which holds the suture when it comes out through there and pulls it out through the portal. The entire suture passing devices called the suture shuttles, the left and the right, they roll to the left and roll to the right. This is the left, this is the right. So this has a suture loop which comes from inside. When you do that, the loop comes outside. And this is used to pull the loop of suture or the fiber wire out, out through the tissue you want. So this is an indirect device. We'll demonstrate how each one is used. Stop. That is a bird beak or direct suture passing device which is used to pull a suture using the eyelet at the end. You open the mouth, close it and pull it out. There you have it. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it's difficult to manipulate sometimes inside the closed spaces or tight spaces inside the shoulder. This is another very useful suture passing device. It's a true pass, which has a needle which comes out and the thread is pulled out. So, how the true pass works is first you have to load the true pass into the lower. Uh, limb of the mouth of the true pass and it, it locks there it's, it's locked there see it's locked there and with the true pass we go inside the place where you want to place the bite you take the bite with this and you push the needle which comes out with the suture in its edge so when you release it, release the needle, the suture is locked in the mouth of that device. So when you pull it out, the suture comes out through there and you release it from the tip of the true pass. So again, <coughs> you have the two limbs. This is a very useful device while doing rotator cuff repairs, especially in the B-chair position. So you just directly go in, take the bite and come out. So it's so simple, but you have to learn how to use it because the suture must come, come out from the tip and stuff like that. So the third type of device, as we said, is the indirect suture passing device or the suture shuttle no? or the, uh, the acupass, no, as well as any of So this, how it works is, again, you take a bite through there. So I'll demonstrate the other way for better visualization. You take a bite with that, you puncture the tissue into which you want to pass the suture, then you roll the roller here so that the loop comes out from there. The suture which has already been placed inside the joint somewhere there can be pulled out using the suture retriever. You pass the suture retriever through the loop and you pull the thread into that loop and then when you pull this device out of the joint the suture comes out from there. This is very useful especially in difficult areas where in the lower part of the shoulder joint especially in the fiber block position where you can use a true pass or an indirect suture passing device is very useful especially in tight joints where the space is less. Now we can go to the suture tying, the knot tying.